and action. Hi, bonjour. Welcome back to Show and Tell. Why am I saying bonjour? Stick around and find out. See this little sweater right here? This is the reason I'm going to Paris. I'll explain. Before I do, though, I wanted to bring you up to date on the holiday season in Manhattan. Things are in full gear now with Christmas just a week away. At the end, I'm going to show you a vintage fair that I went to with clothing and the jewelry vault. And also a swing band swinging in the holidays. Those will be at the end of the recording because they're not so knitting related. But on the knitting docket, I wanted to remind you that I am running a knit along for what I'm calling the Spencer Cow. I'll insert a picture here. This is the beginning of what my ribbing looks like. And I have started to knit ahead of the group. So just a little bit of a reveal. This is some of the lace. I think I was a little bit overzealous to start a new project. And I began this knit along probably at the least optimal time of the year. So the people who have already started with me, they have done much less than I have. And they're asking for other people to please come and join us because you know how it is, the more the merrier. So even if you didn't start when I first called for people, please click the link in the show notes below to go and register. There's a small fee, but there will be a prize and the prize will be larger based on there being more and more people. So please come join us. Um, it's designed to be an undergarment. Some of the people are planning to knit it as a, a thin sweater. It can be done with fingering or even lace weight. I'm using this comb, which is left over from my genie, and I'm doubling it. So two strands of this, and it's still quite thin. But there's a lot of flexibility. I wouldn't do it in a bulky way, but anything fingering or finer would be great. So we welcome you. The other thing I wanted to remind you about is my upcoming trip to, I keep calling it my upcoming trip to Paris, but it's really a trip to France because we will be visiting a couple of small towns that are an hour plus outside of the city. During that time, I will be visiting with Matthew Brown, who you might have seen me interview in an earlier episode. I'll, I'll put a link to it up here. He has a very vast button collection and I am offering to go shopping for you in his attic. So if you reach out to me either on Ravelry or Instagram at Billy Toy, just give me an idea of what size buttons, what material you might be looking for, all of his buttons are vintage. He's got things that are made of casein and mother of pearl and vegetable ivory. I can't be sure of what I'm going to find, but I will try and match up for you if you have a particular color or shape. Um, so be in touch with me on that. And it could be a very interesting opportunity. If it's possible, I might be able to communicate with you over an Instagram live to show you some things, but you must reach out to me privately. If you can't find me privately, leave a message in the comments below this, and I'll try and figure out something with you. Since there's still a week before Christmas, I wanted to point out to you that I had created a video showing my suggestions for the top 10 holiday gifts for knitters. So if you're shopping for someone who's a knitter, here's the link, go and check that out as well. So there's a television series called Emily in Paris. Some of you are probably familiar with it. They were doing a big promotion in Manhattan last weekend. 
even though I picked a rainy day to go out and take a look, I wanted to share a little bit of it with you. So they were giving out these passports and they were calling it Emily in Little Paris because they've designated this one street in Manhattan, I guess temporarily Little Paris. If you stop at certain vendors, you can have them stamp up your passport. And with a number of stamps, there were various prizes. I didn't get involved in that. It was raining. You can see my passport's all rumpled from the rain. But it was really a way of introducing people to some of the French-inspired shops on, the, on that particular block. Center Street between Broom and Grand. It's rather a rainy day in New York, but Paris is always Paris, isn't it? So New York has flipped for all things French on this block. I'm on Center Street. It was just perfect for me because I'm in the Paris mindset. I turned my apartment inside out looking for my Paris par arrondissement. This is an essential little red book to have if you're a serious visitor to Paris. I have all kinds of notes from past trips. Every neighborhood has its own street map and every single street is on here. Now, I will also be using Google Maps on my phone, but I don't think they'll get down to this level of detail. I don't know if, if I hold this close, if you can see. It will show you the actual numbers of buildings. So if you're looking for 65 Rue, Faubourg, Rue du Faubourg Saint-Honoré, it's right there, which is fantastic. Paris is super complicated. I would never attempt to drive there, but each arrondissement has a number and you can just flip to with these numbered tabs along the edge, flip to the number of that neighborhood and get a plan. There's also a list of different attractions, which even though my book is old now, it's unlikely that these churches would no longer be there. The police station is probably in the same place. The central post office would still be there. Uh, covered markets, it tells you in the 10th arrondissement, the St. Martin and St. Quentin uh, markets and gives you the address. So it's really got a tremendous amount of information. Plus I have marked it up over the years with little sticky notes of places that I have been to or places I intend to go to. And you can see, I've also put 
in highlighter streets that I've walked on. So I don't ever have to repeat those streets. If I don't want to, I can choose new routes. It's really fantastic. There is also in the back a huge fold out map, which I never use. It's unwieldy, but it's there should I ever need it. Anyway, I'm so happy I found it because it's, it's really like a great tool to have. So speaking of Paris, let's get back to the sweater. This is the 1920, I think it's 20, 1927 Bonat sweater designed by Elsa Scaparelli. There are a few of these known to me. One is in the Philadelphia Museum of Art. One is in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. And one is in Paris. It's the Paris one that I'm making a trip to see. Could I have gone to Philadelphia when they did the shocking show there many years ago? Yes. Did I? No, because I wasn't in the thick of knitting then. But now that I'm knitting a lot of vintage, this is a sweater that was really one of the earliest sweaters not to be used for sporting activities, but really as ready to wear. I believe that Scaparelli did it in different colors, but the one that most people are familiar with, and I believe the one that's in the exhibit is a black background with a white bow. You may have seen that. But since shocking pink was the color that she named, I decided to make mine a little bit different and do the pink bow. This was a knit along. I'll also put a link so you can go look at some of those episodes where you know a lot of us were knitting it. But because it's part of this special exhibit in Paris right now, I decided that I really would like to go back to Paris. So it's because of this that we're going. And it's a fairly quick trip. It's, it's just going to be a week, a couple of days in the countryside, and then about five days in Paris. So I thought as long as I was on the topic of Paris, I might show you some of the sweaters that I'm planning to take with me. I'm not checking luggage. So I want to take things that will fit easily in carry on. So I picked the thinnest sweaters, all fingering weight. This one, this was also a knit along. And this Harlequin that I collaborated with Roxanne Richardson, you might remember. And this is a sweater that I knit back in the 1980s with bobbles. Super thin, as you can see. So these and more will easily fit into my, my carry-on luggage. So I think that's, I think that's it for today. Um, I'll try and squeeze in another episode before I leave for France, but just in case, um, please remember to comment below. Tell me your favorite restaurant in Paris, which arrondissements, and if you know um, anything that you think I shouldn't miss. Of course, I've been there many, many times. I've seen a lot of the museums. The list of places that we plan to see this time is kind of short. There's going to be some time spent with family. Um, yeah, maybe I could talk more about that when I come back. Remember to like this episode if you're enjoying it. I implore you to comment below. It's really helpful for the future of this channel. Take care, everyone. À la prochaine, as they say in France. Ciao.
good looking. He's not there. 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 He